Uh, hello. Can you hear me, Maria? Yes. Yes, I can Hi. hear you. Hi. Um, I can only speak in English, but I just wanted to join and just, um, you know, see what the conversation was about. I just, um, you know, logged in to the live stream. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for so much. I I cannot tell you how happy I am to hear from a woman, from a female. Uh, where Rose is here, I hope she can join in too. Anything you would like to add to our stream? Um, I didn't join in the very beginning, but I know it's just, you know, a woman's corner, a woman's talk. Um, do you know what, what is the topic on hand? Is there anything specific um, that you would like for me to comment on? No, it was supposed to be a fun stream. Nuria was supposed to join. IW was supposed to join. I, I, I don't know. I haven't heard from them. But mm -hmm. anything you can, like, that concerns you, that you think should be highlighted regarding women's issues, we have done many streams together regarding like multiple issues, including, you know, women liberation movements, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening in Iran, Arab March, you know, the women's march in Pakistan regarding mm -hmm. cousin marriages, child marriages, domestic violence, um, any like dating, ageism, sexism. So, and beauty standards, that was a very important stream. I think every everyone should go back and, you know, listen to it. Uh, so we have tried to cover everything. Um, if there is anything that we are lacking, I'm sure there are like billions and billions of issues that women are, you know, facing. Anything that you want you want to add or highlight, uh, we'll, we can talk about it. Uh, just just now, I think um, Hakim Ji came and he highlighted that how women don't take care of themselves, mm -hmm. they don't do exercise. Yes. And, uh, so. You know, because they're they're not like they don't have too many opportunities. The society is very conservative, and uh, going to gym is seen as uh, you know women are like out of hand and out of control or something. So um, yeah, so I did want to point out one thing. I think there was a study that I had read. Um, it was done in the UK. And it was amongst um, Pakistani women who were older that had families and kids and just kind of seeing their life and work like life balance in regards to taking care of themselves health wise. Um, I saw that like just from the study, it said that they could not put in time to do it because of the many reasons that you highlighted that their in-laws would allow them. They would say that, oh, you're selfish. Like, you know, why are you making certain foods for yourself? Think about the kids. Think about your husband. What, why would he, you know, um, want to eat this? Like, why don't you think about him? So, it's always just the idea of always just um, disregard. You have to disregard your own humanity, your own life as a woman in the society, just so, you know, other people in your family, especially the men can strive, your husband can strive, your sons, your brothers can strive. Um, and it's debilitating to us mentally, but also physically, because as we can see, um, we are, you know, not encouraged to take care of ourselves, to take care of our health. Um, and is um, it, it kills us in the end. There's so many women that I know that you know age so fast. They um, you know go, grow old. They have so many diseases, but you know they're not encouraged to look after themselves and take care of themselves. Um, it's that you know mentality of just you know taking. We ought to always be some a giver to everyone else, but that um, help and that love is never received to us. Exactly. So uh, as a matter of fact, once when I was in Pakistan and I was sitting in a you know gathering and people said, well, you are, you're in good shape. What do you do? And I said, diet and exercise. So they asked me like the women, you know, they were very curious how many times in a week I go to the gym. I said at least three to four times. Mm -hmm. And they kind of made fun of me. Like we don't even have time to form like cooking and cleaning and I know deep down inside, they all were, you know, you know, they wanted to be in a, you know, fit and all that. But they, you know, when somebody puts you down in a way, deep down, they want to be like you. So mm -hmm. I don't, they don't have opportunities. They didn't even have the realization mm -hmm. that even after like 40 years of your life or 35, even after having children, you can look good. You, you deserve to look good. It's yes. not about you are trying to impress other men. It's like this kind of uh, mentality should be thrown out in, from the window into the you know dustbin. That mm -hmm. when women are taking care of their taking care of themselves, it's not for some other men. It's for their own sake. Like loving yourself is also you know self love is very important, and it's not selfishness. 
it's it's when you take care of yourself you're able to take care of others around you your loved ones so it's not selfish act to go to gym it you totally deserve your time it's it, it gives you some time off from your family and you have to focus on yourself so you can do any kind of exercise you can do yoga you can meditate just take some time for yourself mm-hmm. and it's uh, it should be that way unfortunately this kind of mindset uh, it will take some time to come you know yes um and i think um i'm not sure if you recently saw that um in sind they recently made a pink bus for women um yes. just to have their own space and i think something as small as that just bothers you know that kind of society just like why would you even think of doing something like that so yeah. even when our own life like with this stuff that we need our needs are not even questioned our needs um you know are not even brought to the focus that's why when we make spaces like this such as something a space like this is seen as stupid is seen as selfish is seen as you know going against god is going against everything cuz how dare you think of yourself cuz that's right. how it comes down to whether yeah. it is making a choice on who you want to marry where you want to go in your life whether you want to just simply exercise it's like how dare you think of yourself exactly so what happens in in pakistan they what they do is they ban everything mm-hmm. so they're just trying to you know keep their eyes closed like putting their head in the sand so they don't want to face it you know they have to accept that there are people who are questioning the existence of god they are questioning the ideologies who are questioning why things are the way that they are like what is god where he came from you know so they don't want to accept these questions that they, that these are realities and we are not like uh, rebels we just exist do you have to accept mm-hmm. us? so that's uh, that is where my problem is that that's why i started these streams that you know i exist and this is my authentic self this is how i think and mm-hmm. i'm not going to hide myself behind some like uh, i'm not going to pretend to be religious because that's i it doesn't make sense to me so mm-hmm. you have to have a dialogue with me like why i think this way killing me or banning me won't solve the problem because there are so many people like me who think like me who are you mm-hmm. know these things don't make sense to them or they grew out of religion and they yeah. so when you travel when you come outside and you see oh my god like these white people they are just like us they they're like they're just humans like us they have same feelings they think this like they have families they love their you know children they love their parents so what is different we are all humans and these mm-hmm. religions are just boundaries that we humans draw you know just to feel good about ourselves so mm-hmm. a lot of things you grew out of so religion is the same thing you just grew out of it it's mm-hmm. like it happened you just grew out of it it doesn't make any sense anymore so and it- Yeah and it should always be a choice like religion your faith is very personal it should be a choice and i think when you when people refuse to have a conversation because it goes against my beliefs like you know this is haram like we can't talk about this and if you're not willing to go past that point to have a conversation you never grow you know our progress nothing changes if you just think i someone is a scoffer and you know we you know just throwing labels at them banning them expelling them from the country expelling them from society you never grow um and i think the one thing i want to point out is when um a lot of people come in defense in regards to this kind of discourse that well islam gave us rights so why are you even complaining why are you even fighting well there are people that still die because these rights weren't given so you know quote unquote because where are they you know what in what part of the world are we safe in what part of the um corner are muslims or non muslims even uh, m- women even safe to live in and exist in and why is the focus on whether religion gave us rights or not i mean i think in general we can think yes we are human beings so of course we do have rights we exist of course we do have rights but what have we done to protect individuals who have been killed doba who have been um you know violated um in the name of religion because it's the only defense you have is like well you know we have rights though but how does that change anything um and when people come in defense saying that you know we um ha- you guys have a different misunderstanding i have a different understanding of islam you had the wrong understanding of it why is the understanding the priority here 
why are these individuals lives not the priority here why do why is not the safety of women the existence of women because we are as you say we are allah's creation we are god's creation why are you not trying to protect their creation why are you why are you not letting us exist as his creation um because i am personally agnostic muslim like i am very agnostic i've always been like this my whole life um I've always thought my connection with, um, you know, God is just with me and him. I don't need to prove that to anybody. I don't need to pray five times a day or, you know, fast Ramadan to prove that to anyone. I don't, cause I don't answer to anybody. Um, and I think with Pakistan, cause I've, you know, I live in the United States. I don't have the, I haven't struggled in the way that a lot of women especially on your stream come in and talk about their struggles from living in pakistan i'm very lucky i'm very privileged to have had the experiences that i've had but we all share as i was telling nuria i was like we all have that seed of that society in us those seeds exist everywhere they exist in our households they exist within our family dynamics in the diaspora whether it's in the united kingdom Whereas Canada is in America, we all universally, like you, um, Dr. Madiha, we we share a commonality. And what's what, what what is the root? Who is at the root of these seeds? Unfortunately, you know what happens? Like a lot of uh, Desi families, like we, we live in America, so we see we see it how they differently they treat their male male you know sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. For yeah. sons, they're allowed to date, and they mm -hmm. have. Been Carry them off to you know white girls mm -hmm. or any other nationality. For their daughters, mm -hmm. they're so conservative about them. They, they're not allowed to date, mm -hmm. and they marry them off very young to the. And some of them they don't get married because they were never allowed to date. And mm -hmm. these girls are you know I, I just feel they're so conflicted in these. And a lot of people they move back home when their girls are grown up because mm -hmm. they don't want them to be spoiled by this society. Yeah. So, how unfair to these children you bring them to this country you expose them to the freedom they see yeah. the freedom how it feels like and then you take them back home to mm -hmm. be, you know uh, in those restrictions and the, those children i just feel like it's so unfair yeah. and our societies and our you know these desi mindset needs to go why they don't assimilate and one more thing i, I because you live in the united states you'll be able to comment on it. What I see is um, the the Desis, the Muslims, they still live in their um, small communities and whenever mm -hmm. they, they advocate for Muslim societies. But I don't see that in Hindus. They, mm -hmm. they become like part of America and they, mm -hmm. uh, they identify themselves as Americans, not as Hindus. So they don't do advocacy for Hindus. They do advocacy as an American. So I just mm -hmm. feel like even when they move to these countries from Muslim mm -hmm. countries, they still see themselves as a separate entity. They don't mm -hmm. become part of the fabric of the United States. What do you think about that? I know. I agree. Um, I remember when I did the, uh, my video and chat with Nuria, I said that the Muslim identity, especially in the United States, is treated like a racial identity. It's like saying like, oh, I am black, I am Latina, you know, I am um, Pakistani. It's like saying like, you know, I'm, ba I'm Muslim instead of saying I'm Pakistani. And the issue with that was saying like, oh, this is like a Muslim identity. Like, you know, this is our Muslim lifestyle. The issue that I have with that is, you know, that label of Muslim is like saying like, oh, this is a Christian lifestyle. This is like my Christian identity. But your faith is interchangeable. But who you, where you come from won't be. Like I will, I, I always say that I'm Pakistani instead of saying I'm Muslim because my faith can always change. It should be allowed to change. And I think that causes such a cognitive dissonance because people don't want to, you know, talk about Islam or they don't want to talk about, you know, the issues in the Muslim community because it's treated as racist because you have taken that label of being Muslim at, instead of, you know, part of your connection with your faith and taken entirely into a uh, more racial and cultural identity when a lot of us don't have that um, connection too. A lot of us shouldn't have to say that, you know, we are Muslim just because we came from a Muslim background because a lot of us may change our faith. Like our faith may change. We may convert to another religion or we may become atheist agnostic. Um, and we should have to, we should allow that kind of space um, to do that. But 
I do agree with you because even when you see in media or in Hollywood, it's like this, these are like, you know, Muslim films. These are like, you know, a Muslim story when honestly, yes, of course, like a lot of those stories can be connected to each other, but our background, our cultural background has, you know, a part to play in our experience too. But that isn't as emphasized as much as uh, much of being Muslim is. And I think the main factor that plays into that, to that is because of 9-11. Um, I think after that, it became very, like, a lot of people came adamant, like, to stay Muslim and to have that identity because of the consequences of being Muslim in this country. Right. What I was saying is that when Hindus don't advocate for Hindu identity, they mm-hmm. they, they go for Americans. They, they identify themselves as you know, Americans. So they don't go for, you know, Muslims, these are Muslim, this is a Muslim governor, this is a Muslim mayor. I mean, I was like, what is that? We are all Americans. Why are you dividing, you know, mm-hmm. instead of uniting? So I don't I don't like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks so much for coming and, uh, you know, uh, expressing your views. Um, yeah. Uh, I would, I would uh, you know, like, I would like you to stay so we can talk to young atheist do you understand Rudita? yes um yeah i would like to say a little bit i don't think i'll be able to stay for too long um but i would like to say just to have like a discussion and you know talk um amongst everyone exactly